Hey guys, I'm Chris, welcome back. Very lucky day today. Had a knock on the door from the postman uh, about an hour ago. This is the package from UKMC Pro, taking the KWA LM4. So out here today I'm gonna open up this package and do a bit of an unboxing for you. Um, UKMC themselves, the actual retailer, I'll put a link down in the description. Uh, this is the first time I've used them and I have to say I was very impressed. So if you check out their site, if you see anything you like, get their uh, get their membership scheme that they do. It's like a fiver and that gives you 10% off on everything they do for a year. But bearing in mind what the, the rifle cost itself, I spent that five pounds and I think the base price of the rifle was about 350. So 10% off is 35 quid. So straight away, I've saved myself 30 quid. And that's if I don't even buy you know, anything else from the site. So as I say guys, highly recommend UKMC Pro, I think it's .co.uk. But anyway, I'll put the URL in the description. Get yourself a membership and, uh, and check them out. So, and then four, let's get on with the unboxing. Here we go then. Definitely a job for my trusty Spyderco knife. Good old made in USA, bit of a sharp steel there. So, so there we go, let's crack in and a uh, nice bit of sped up footage coming your way guys. Righty then. <laughs> you see, that's pretty well uh, pretty well wrapped up by uh, by the guys at the UKMC Pro, so uh, can't complain about the shipping method. One spare magazine. Two spare magazine. And there. Uh, there we go. There's a motto for life, if I ever, if I ever heard of one. Right then. Standard bit of cardboard box. Ah, right, opens up from this end. And here she comes. There we have it. Plenty of uh, plenty of polystyrene around it. We go inside. So manual, as you'd expect. It's quite a it's quite a thick old manual though. That's, that's a fair amount of pages in there. How many how many pages? Is it? Wish I wasn't wearing gloves so I could actually do things. That was good, that was good. And see, the, the, the rifle itself, I went for the standard edition with the, the Colt type uh, receivers instead of the, they do the Magpul PTS edition, but it costs more and everything I've ever heard says these, these Stanag mags are the better option for the LM4s. And if you buy the PTS edition of this rifle, it comes with a PMAG and they weigh like 800 grams per magazine. When, you, when, you know, when you're looking at nearly a whole kilogram per magazine, that's a bit much weight. So yeah, have the manual, pop up, pop up adjustment tool there. Don't lose that, whatever you do. Get like an ACS stock or something like that so you can put it inside a little storage compartment. Front sight adjustment tool for your standard uh, US General Issue A2 triangular front post slash gas block. Safety cover for the barrel. A loading tool there. Won't bother with that. So this is. I really like the design of these magazines. They're a lot simpler, and I think they're going to be a lot more robust and work much better than the WA system magazines that I've tried from GMP so far. And here's the main event. Standard. US General Issue Type M4A1 in its stock configuration. 
for guys, for those of you out there who worry about which bits of metal and which bits of plastic, the only stuff that's plastic is what's meant to be plastic, i.e. LE type collapsible stock, A2 style pistol grip, Colt standard style handguards, and everything else is as it should be. I've got to tell you guys, I'm liking the look of this, we've got a little bit of this silicone or something on there, but you can tell it you can tell it's been test fired already. Very nice, very smooth action. Lock the bolt to the rear, like so. Well, that's that is always I love that noise. Very satisfying. Nice click. There's the trades on it. Probably either do some sort of a paint job or get this camo dipped or something like that. So the trades aren't the prettiest, but like I say, I'll be covering them up anyway. A bit of a closer look at all the parts. A2 birdcage flash eye in there. Standard gas block, your front sling mount. This is stock. Actually comes with a, a nice sling hook there for your one point slings, which is not something you usually get as standard, so that's good to see. Nice detail there, having the fake gas tube goes all the way into the receiver, as it should be. Bolt looks pretty realistic, bolt carrier should I say. A2 style carry handle with your adjustable sights. Good stuff, so let's, let's move the camera around and get more of a, a general overview look. So, there she is, KWA LM4, out of the box. Looking pretty fucking sweet, I've got to say. Very, very smooth action on the bolt. Nicely, uh, nice bit of grease in there. Nice smooth oil, clean oil from the manufacturer. The trigger is not the best, I'm not gonna lie. It's a, it's a bit, it's a bit sort of gritty, as they say, on, on the take up. I'll show you up close, though. So I'll show you from this side. You press, and you get a bit of a take up, and then it clicks. The weird thing is, if you wrap the action and then get get rid of the take up, it'll stay there. It won't re it won't reset back to its original position. And then you get there's a bit more, and then the click. So I think yeah, I think that's going to wear in with time. But to be honest, for an airsoft gun, it's a minor detail. I'm not too fussed. I think once you're actually in game, you're pressing the trigger at a fairly rapid rate. You're not really going to notice that sort of thing. The things that do matter. Now, if you want to keep this gun in its stock configuration, what I find impressive is that the handguard, most cheap, especially clone guns, um, you know, AR 15s, that use these type of handguards, they are wobbly as hell. They're such cheap pieces of junk, they're so pointless. These are good solid plastic, they're really solid in their mounting. The stock, again, is good plastic. There's a tiny bit of wobble in it. I've never seen an LE stock, even on real ARs, I've never seen one that didn't wobble a little bit. So, there's a little bit of movement, a little bit of play. But it is it's well constructed overall. The pistol grip's really nice. The good thing about these GBB rifles is that because you don't have a motor in the pistol grip, this area here, in that dimension, is a lot thinner. It makes it a lot more comfortable to grip, or for my hands anyway. I think most people would probably find the same. The fit on the receivers now, this can be a big problem with a lot of GPP rifles, especially ARs. These ones are not going anywhere, so there's a rock. Tiny bit of wobble in the front sight, not going to notice that in game. The barrel, nah, I didn't think that would be a problem anyway. Nicely machined flash eliminator there. Got your sling point, that's pretty well on there. Like I said, I do like the detail I put in with the, the fake gas tube inside the handguards. It's good to see. Just a nice little feature. Forward assist, is it functional? Let's try and let's see if I can make it go out of the battery. It's probably gonna be hard. Can't make it do it. If I press, yeah, forward assist is functional. 
selector itself, very solid when it goes into safe. Not quite as nice of a click when you put it into the other modes. You can hear that one when it goes into safe, semi, auto, safe. But to be honest, the main thing you need to be concerned about with the selector is going from one of the other firing modes into safe. That's the primary concern, and that's very good. Tactile, I think, is the word I like to use. Finish on the receiver is nice. Buffer tubes, good and solid. I won't take it apart just now, guys, but suffice to say, there we go. The, the, yeah, the magazines is brilliant. That is one thing I always, always had problems with with GMP WA system guns. The mags, they either sit too high up or not high up enough and you could get the bolt sticking. I mean, look, that's, that's smooth as anything. Right there. Locked back perfectly, just as it should. There isn't any gas in it right now, I'm afraid, so shooting will have to wait for another day, but I'll, I'll do that soon, guys. Don't worry about that. Because trust me, I'm, I'm looking forward to shooting this thing. Everything I've heard says the, uh, the recoil is pretty immense, so... Okay. So I won't be hanging around for getting a few BBs down range with this thing. Magazines drop out nice and smoothly. Very impressed at all, guys. Very impressed. Great thing about the LM4 is all the internals are steel. Back when the GMP WOCs came out, you were paying something like five, six hundred pounds for a WA system gun with steel internals. One of these, about 350. You know, say considering your trigger, your sear, your hammer, it's a roller bearing hammer, all that, that stuff in the lower receiver, all made out of steel. I'm pretty damn sure the bolt carrier is steel as well. The nozzle and the plastic is nice and thick. So that's gonna, you know, it's gonna last. Stock FPS, I'll do a chrono next time I shoot this, so keep an eye out on another video for that, guys. I keep going on, there's so many things to talk about. Like I say, it's good to see that one point sling hook as standard. I'll probably replace it, but if you don't want to, if you just want to run this gun as it is, which would be perfectly fine, then uh, it is nice to have that there. I'm not a fan of using this sling hook here back on the stock. It's not, it's not my preference, personally. But I think, I'll, I think I'll stop there before I keep on going on forever and ever. Though. So there we go, KWA LM4 PTR. There's some, uh, there's some, some nice TLAs for you, three-letter abbreviations. We, we do love them in the, in the sort of tactical military airsoft type world, don't we? So, cheers, guys, for watching. I do appreciate it. Thanks for the subs, like good stuff. See you next time.